Hatapu, Hatapu, peace and blessings, peace, peace, peace. Trust that all is well and that you are in a good place. We are getting everything ready and in preparation for us to come live and direct on our our event. So give me a moment. There we go. We're going to put it in there. We're going to say next Herrera. And we're getting it all live so that when it comes up, we are good to go. And we're going to get back into position here. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I don't even know what that is. Uh, okay. All right. So we're going to get our title here. And we're going to be getting it in. Continuing series one. Okay, so that's done. We got everything that we need to have going here. And we're gonna do a time check at three minutes till. I'm gonna grab a little Siparera on the water. Now we're gonna go live. So we are live on Facebook. It's processing, processing, processing. And we're inside of our event. We're up. And we're live. And so now we want folks to know that we're live. So we're going to make it happen. For everybody that was down, that knows what's cracking. They know where we are. So we are in, we are live. And we are looking forward to joining with you and to expand on what we're talking about. So if you're live over here on Facebook, glad to see you. We're getting ready to hook it up and set it up so that we will be able to be also live simulcasting on our other platform, which is going to be Zoom. Herrera actually is not Zoom. We're going to be on live with this other thing that we call Instagrammery. So we're getting ready to do that right now. So I'm going to set it up so that we can get our title in here. Give me just a moment, we're gonna type this in. Okay. Oh, I'm so glad that we all are here today, that this is what we got going on. No, I'm not messing with that. Everybody ready? Hopefully you're ready. I'm ready. And here we go. Hey, 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 hey. Peace and greetings, family. Peace and greetings. I'm so glad that we're all here. So glad that we're all here.
just want to be able to let everybody know how glad we are that people are here. You know, and, and welcome everybody. Okay. So glad everybody's here, Hajapu. As we say, Heru Nefer, if you're getting it in the daytime, otherwise it's gonna be Uncle Jasaneb, life, health, and strength to all of you that you may be able to join with us. So, you know, we're grateful. Uh, you know, we just want to get it in so that folks know where they can support us, okay? And the event they want to support us, we want them to be able to do so. All right, so we're going to post that around. We don't have that one pinned. Folks are coming in. Hopefully folks will join us. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, two minutes in and we got stuff going. First off, my name is Npu Kamuts. I am the primary instructor and lead founder for the Kemetic Ahan Sama Association. I am grateful to be here with you this wonderful afternoon. This first of November, we're continuing our series of work with leading with our liberation tools. In other words, tools for helping you get liberated, understanding your body. We did a series of 10 together in a row, spanning parts of July and August and September. And I really want you, if you get an opportunity, each one builds on the next one. So I really hope that you have an opportunity to take a look at those. These particular Sunday conversations, chats, whatnot, are designed as a supplement for the Zoom and YouTube sessions that we do to also be able to enhance and value add to what we're doing there and also give you an opportunity to check in with us. And where there are questions, please, You'll have an opportunity to ask the questions. If I'm not able to answer your question in real time, my goal will be to answer your question in the chat follow up. So my goal is if you're on Facebook and getting this, please leave a comment. I'll answer it as soon as I can after the session. If you are joining us on Instagram, where we have a few folks, I would be grateful for you to either try and write it in the chat while we're going through, as long as it doesn't get to be too challenging, I'll try and address your question directly. Today's topic we're gonna to talk about is, you need to be doing more than one thing. And I know that's kind of a, uh, that's the colloquial way of saying it, but I wanna look at it in terms of, when you're dealing with your health, you wanna be doing multiple modes of techniques or practices that enable you to have optimal health. And so I know you're asking, well, why would I need to do more than one thing? You know, I eat right and, you know, and I kind of move around a little bit, but the main thing is I, I, I eat right. And what I want to share with you is that all of us don't eat right all the time. And just eating right alone, we want, we're going to get into that. What I want to do is I want to build the foundations in a way that is accessible to everybody while also taking the time and opportunity to reference you to the previous sessions that we did, where we broke down the human body, we broke down the subtle energy bodies, and we went through all of those ways that the body, the human body works in terms of microcosm to macrocosm. So today, what we're gonna do is expand on why it is that we teach the way that we teach in terms of our tools and practices, our actual praxis, aspects of our pedagogy for like why we teach the way that we teach. And then to give it to you in a way that hopefully there may be some questions that may come about in terms of what does this all mean? Okay? Sound like it's something we can work with to get started? I hope so. 
So again, let me get a little bit of my background because for those that you know haven't really had an opportunity to, you know, I don't talk about my background often. I just want to do it here at the outset so we can get. I have a, I have a couple of degrees from a, a major Western university uh, in psychology and sociology. Uh, and in addition to that, I have spent the last 40 years studying nutrition and nutrition science, looking at it from indigenous perspectives, being trained by some indigenous elders, both from Africa and here on Turtle Island, being in spaces where they shared knowledge about plant medicine, about the human body, about subtle energy bodies, uh, having studied Tai Chi Chuan, Qigong, self applied health enhancement methods, Rec Hati Committee or Comedic Mind Science with Heri Kafra and uh, Sunu Herukuti. Also working with aspects of the Temple of the White and Gold Lotus Shrine of Amun Ra, where I was a fully initiated eminent chair, where we spent the time and also learned the Medu chair as taught by uh, Sunut Rekhati Amen, who was the Medina chair advisor to the Temple of the White and Gold Lotus Shrine of Amun Ra, and the ways in which that enhanced the mind, enhanced the body, enhanced the psyche. So I've got that training in addition to the training of yoga, kinesiology, and the study of the human body. And I have partnered both in New York briefly with my teacher, uh, Sunu Hirukuti in the 90s when AIDS was a, a very big issue impacting the black and brown communities. We spent time there talking to them about this multimodal approach to overall health and, and healing. And so I want to get into that now that you have some aspect of my background. This will be, this is my 31st year actively practicing Tai Chi Chuan Qigong meditation and Rekha T committee commit mind science our meditation system this it was my 29th year well about my yeah about my 27th year teaching these arts I lived with uh, my teacher for two years so I want to get some of this background information out so that folks understand it as I'm talking I'm not just talking from my own personal opinion. I'm not, I mean, although when I do have a personal opinion, I will share that. I'm speaking from a space of what my teachers and their teachers shared directly with them in terms of what has been done, what is useful, what has proven practical and tangible for people, both groups and individuals over time. Now that we have the background, both Western and traditional, yogic and tai chi and qigong i've also studied with some folks i'm not going to name their names because i'm not currently an official student or i've been known as an official student of theirs although i do honor them as my teachers elders jagna and so i'm grateful for the time that they have spent with me and when i use their work i will reference them directly so they may have the proper credit for it but in terms of being an official student as a practitioner of the, the path and the way until I become what one may call a disciple, I'm not or I'm, I don't really want to talk about the folks that I've learned from unless it is in response to a direct question, which hopefully should give you an opportunity to look at it in that way. So let me say it this way. Tai Chi Chuan and Qigong, the way we teach them, are practiced together along with what we call Sma or Sama or what many others refer to as yoga. So we teach those practices as a way to enhance the body, as a way to promote health and longevity, as a way through the name of Tai Chi Chuan, which means the supreme ultimate path or the supreme ultimate fist. We talk about it as a way to engage the body so that you're able to maintain optimal health 
in all situations, be they macroscopic or microscopic. All right. So that being said, <laughs> I need to find another catchphrase. We do these tools and present these tools as a way to aid our association membership and people that are working with us to help them make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. And I want to present it to you this way. So if you're doing Tai Chi Chuan, Qigong, meditation, the primary building blocks are outside of your body. You don't need a lot of other things to do these arts. But you do need fresh water, you do need clean air, and you do need clean food. Okay? And so I say that to say that taking in any one of those things away can create a challenge. So very quickly, I also had the honor of not only serving as an instructor at the Good Life Health Food Center, but also I was trained as a cook there. And I was educated there from the time they opened in 1989 until they closed in the early 2000s by Mama Ifa, by many of the elders in Jegna that came through there, Baba M. Siddiqui, you know, who comes to mind, uh, Dr. B. Sirius, who I work with directly, M. Siddiqui, who I work with, M. Siddiqui, who I worked with and learned a lot about the science of fasting and the things that he talked about. So if you see him or are aware of him, he's also on some social media, you might be able to find him. I'm here as the, the modern version, you might well say. So we're talking about fasting and we get into fasting as a way to look at understanding the human body and working to give you or remind you of what sovereignty feels like in terms of this body, this physical body of over you know, billions and billions of cells listens to your mind and the tools that we use enable your mind to have us in essence to connect with your will to be strong enough to direct this body in an active way not just a passive way and so that as you take that on more and more your health improves we do a series of movements that we refer to as the asar stance for those of you who may also be practicing martial artists, or maybe you may know it as Mapu or horse stance or some variety of uh, pole standing. It's a little different in terms of the meditation we use and orientation. I have a small book coming out on it before the end of this year. Hopefully you get a chance to check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. That notwithstanding, the practice daily, or the goal is to get to a daily practice of these simple things, Asar stance, Tai Chi Chuan, Qigong, the breathing exercises and Sama, or the Aha and then, that, then the Sama. The Aha being the warrior training and the Sama being the movement and the yoking or the joining together of the movement of the body with what we call the Hekau or the Heshi, uh, the chants and the meditations with the breath to create an energetic environment in the body that is conducive to optimal health and healing, that is conducive to creating states in the body that enhance the consciousness, that aid in longevity and aid in overall health. And so when I talk about this, I talk about doing a SARS dance at least 20 minutes a day, talk about doing an improving version of the Tai Chi Chuan. So our Yang form takes a little bit of time to get through and do. As you notice now, we're still just at the lunar cycle in terms of our online class, because we want folks to really grasp the physicality of the movement and to get as close as possible without physical contact to get people to understand the Montu art or the martial science, the aha, behind the Tai Chi. So now we, you've got the Tai Chi going and Tai Chi requires air and breath, air, clean air, clean water, sunlight. I need to say it that way, just as you get started. As you continue your practice, what you'll find is that unlike other types of exercise, you keep your mouth shut, keep your body in the proper orientation, you can go two, three, four hours 
without the need for additional water or hydration because the body learns how to recycle that. Over time, we teach that. The other piece that I want to get to is the food. So ideally, I push organic food for those that are able to get it and everybody's able to get it. It's just at what level? If you're watching this in a place where you don't have access to farmers markets, that's one of the best ways here in the States, but I happen to be you know, fortunate to be in California. Not only is it that some of the fruits and vegetables are able to be grown year round, however, we have access to seasonal fruits. And so this is what you wanna hear me talk about. And if you catch on, we're gonna be on in early December talking about our winter solstice fast. We've already done two other fasts this year. We did one for the spring solstice, a short one. We did one for the, actually we didn't do the spring solstice because we were processing the voluntary shelter at home and what type of services we were gonna be able to continue to provide our members and the community at large. That being, once we got that done, we said we're definitely, because we weren't able to do the spring equinox, we're gonna do the summer solstice. So we did a summer solstice community fast. We explained what that was and how that worked. We then shifted into the fall. We're in the fall now where the active organs and energies deal with the lungs and the large intestine. And so we've talked about what different herbs and plants medicines are ideal for that. And if you haven't heard, I'll just drop it in real quick. You wanna do some things like ginger is very good for the large intestines. And for the lungs, you know, even wanna eat things that are in season, things like grapes. You wanna use plant medicine like leeks, onions, garlic, good for both the lungs and the digestive system, as well as supporting the immune system. You wanna get sunlight as much as you can. You're always gonna hear me talk about sunlight. Want to get as much sunlight as you can and in order to maintain that sunlight you want to moisturize and one of the ways that i moisturize is using organic food grade first cold press the whole you know unrefined all of those things but i use shea butter and i use shea butter from body butter lady it's a senegalese recipe from grandma's old school it's from the roots it's done in a way that is preserves the healing elements of the shea butter, as well as the emollient. So you're not just getting moisturizing, you're actually getting the healing nutrients absorbed through the skin. So that's one of the ways that we wanna maintain our health and talk about multi-modes. You wanna also be able to get in, the, and if it's not Tai Chi, that's fine. It could be Xing Yi Chuan or Bagua Zhang. And if it's not one of the internal three sisters of Asian martial arts, you know, we have in terms of our systems that we're directly connected to, we have Doshi healing arts, we have raw life defense as a part of the urban school of self-defense expressing Sanukas Ryu Jiu Jitsu. That's another partner of ours. And we also work with the Muntu arts with uh, my brother, Dr. Amasis Sunu Amasis Ma'at, and we do a lot of work with uh, Desert Bush Mama, who's here, who does a lot of a lot of plant medicine related to doing the lungs, looking at uh, what we call chaparral or creosote. And do not use unless you have talked to a clear plant medicine holder and follow the recommendations of your PCP, of course, your primary care physician. I'm talking about things in the traditional sense, not for advice or for medical treatment just so we're clear on that note so again the active practice of the tai chi chuan moving so like we're here just kind of rolling this ball back and forth what it enables you to do is learn how the energy moves and flows through the body enhancing your circulation moving the fluids through the body in a way that enhances digestion enhances the system so now we got that and we do that every day and that has a positive impact on the digestive system because it also stimulates regular movements. And while I'm not gonna talk a lot about that today, I do want you to understand the reason we talk about food, the breathing and the meditation is that when we wake up, 
you get your water in, you get your water re body rehydrated from the fast of the night's sleep, your body should be prepared to relieve itself. And so as your body is relieving itself, it's also evacuating not just the bladder, but also the colon. And so that should occur each time that you have a meal. So if you eat, say, you know, four or five meals a day, the bowel should evacuate four or five times a day. And the, as it backs up, then it starts to hold on to these things. And this is where the body starts to produce gas, all this other kind of nasty mucus and stuff gets into the body. As the body's seeking to find a way to get rid of the stuff that you don't want to release, the body you're holding on. And we're not here to hold on. You got an entrance, you know, you got an open, you got an entrance and an exit because stuff's supposed to pass through. Okay. And we know that, and again, I'm not pushing a, a vegan diet or even a vegetarian diet. I'm not pushing any specific ways that you want to provide nutrition for your body. What I would like for you to do is to, if you get an opportunity, you talk to your primary care physician, check out one of our raw food fasts. We have one coming up in, in for the winter solstice for about five days. You know, it varies according to the season. And in doing that, just so you understand your relationship to your body, and through understanding your relationship to your body, you have an opportunity to know what foods work best for you, what foods don't work best for you. Do you eat out of an emotional reason? Do you eat because you know, you're upset, you're unhappy, depressed, angry? Or do you choose and when you eat and you get in this mood, is it one that benefits and uplifts you or is it one that takes you on a downward spiral? Okay, these are things that you can learn during the, during the fast. These are things that we do with our food logs that enable you to clearly identify what foods and how they make you feel, how they impact you. Many of us have not taken the time to pay attention, which is the one thing that you own really is your attention. You own that, you control that. That's what we want to do. So quickly, I want to take a quick survey of folks. We're going to talk about value, okay? And what's most important and what's most valuable. Okay, I've done this before, but I want to do it with y'all today. Just going to have a little fun, okay? So I want you to take this finger, and if you have your health right now, if you're in relatively good health, put up this as one finger for one, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to draw in the air. We're going to kind of air draw it, got it? Now keep it simple. We're going to air draw it. So if you have people that love you, we're going to draw a zero next to that. Okay, if you love yourself, we're going to draw another one. If you've got safe place to stay, we're going to draw it. Another circle. Keep on going for every good and positive thing that you have going for you. You have family support, people that love you. You're able to be in a place that's dry when it's wet, that is cool when it's hot, that is hot when it's cold and that is warm and cozy when you need it to be. Let's add some of them zeros in. You have a partner if you want to have a partner. You have quiet and silence if you want to have quiet and silence, okay? You have the tools that you need when you need them. You have the joy that you need and can access when you need it. Okay, now you have all of those things. Now let's take away our health. What do you have? A bunch of zeros, nothing. So now, what am I talking about when I'm talking about this multimodal health? What is it that I mean? What I mean is that if you, if you think that the best thing you could do is be vegan and that's all you're doing is being vegan, what I eat right, that's not enough, okay? I'm vegetarian, you know, I watch what I eat, I count my calories, but what else do you do? The world that we live in that's not enough. You have to supplement that someplace else. And I'm going to say supplement, but what I really mean is, what is your lifestyle? How do you live out every day? Do you talk about life uplifting, life affirming things and listen to death and watch death videos all day long? And I'm not against any particular genre of music, but I want you to hear really hear what you're putting inside because you're eating that, you're digesting that. 
you're breaking that down into your very essence so that when you digest it, what you give back in the world is what you digested. So what is it that you release in your bowels when you hear that? Or does it tighten up? Does it raise your blood pressure? And I don't mean to get you animated and get you moving, get you jumping. We have healthy healing music that does that. I've been, I've seen Soka. I've been to Carnival, been down to New Orleans. We have all kinds of music from our cultures that uplift, provide light and movement and energy that don't also bring death with it. All right. One of my favorites was a cat named Wise Intelligent from a group called the Poor Righteous Teachers. He had this one line that I stuck on in one of my favorite songs because I'm going to talk about multi modes in a way that you can grasp. And so it's like I would say he had this one song that was called uh, Hot Damn I'm Great. And so that was on the Pure Poverty album for those for those uh, hip hop heads in the room. OK, and so for me, that was that's my self-esteem song. When I'm having doubts about myself, when I'm feeling like, you know, I, I'm, I'm low and I need something to fill me up. One of the songs that I play is this song called Hot Damn, I'm Great. And in the middle of that song, when he's flowing with his rapid fire piece, he goes, let's take a moment because it, it, it moves me. And he, he basically said, you know, never will I feed you poison and disguise it with a beat. The tree of life is in me. Eh? Never will I feed you poison and disguise it with a bee. And he made a promise to us about that. If you check his discography, I say he kept it. But I want you to understand that when you start, and the reason why I'm talking about this multimodal aspect and look at hell is in terms of making a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change, is specifically for this. We got our Tai Chi going, we got our Qi Gong going, we know how to fast and get our nutrition. We got our body on right in terms of what we do every day. We know what foods benefit us, what nutrition doesn't, doesn't. And then we go and we listen to trash music and trash video, watch trash all day. So do we clean the ears out and wash the eyes out and the mouth? What becomes our mantra? for that day. And I'm gonna talk a bit about mantra. We call it Heka, uh, word sound power or Heshi. Okay, for in the, in the comedic practice, depending on the ray of light you come through. I want you to think about that. What is your mantra for the day? You know, is it something that goes, you know, I don't trust no trigger, no hoe. I don't trust a motherfucking soul, really? Is that the thing that you want running in the background of your mind all day? Or is it something that says like, I stimulate life and matter? Or is it something that says, I live in abundance and bounty flows through me? That's what affirmations are able to provide you. Something that affirms and uplifts. And so what, you, what is your affirmation for the day? How often do you say it? Are you a just person? Are you a I don't know person? Are you a person that speaks without thought? So that you're not present? So not only are you not present when it's time to eat, right? And that's when we come to one of my brother's most wonderful songs called In Too Deep by a brother my wife introduced me to, that Damien Jr. Gung Marley. You know, whoever you partner with is a huge impact on your life. You want to be able to choose someone that builds you. And I'm not talking about you looking for that you're broken. I'm not saying those things. I want you to be able to someone who expands the way you look at the world. Feel me? Because that's also going to be important. Who's in your ear when nobody else is around? Are they lifting you up? I was talking with one of my students this morning and we were sharing, you know, that uh, when I'm working with clients, sometimes I'm working with clients that have cancer. And this is when the multimodal, and this is what really brought this on is folks that are in multimodal training, you know, even if you, I'm just sitting in this chair, 
I can do the swinging arms. I can do the sunrises over the mountain. I can do the alternating hands. I can do the hands rising into the heavens. Every day I can do those things. Also, I can eat properly. But if I have negativity around me from the people that are talking negative to me, expressing doubts about my survival, speaking about negativity and toxins into my life, how hard is that going to be for me to get better and heal? So I really want you to, and I'm not saying drop all the people around you, but if you're in a place where you're surrounded by toxicity, find the light where you can. Tell folks, look, I need you to talk to me like this, please. Because when you have cancer and you've given a stage four state diagnosis and they're talking about you're not going to be around, right? You want somebody that's going to help you, that's going to lift you up. Let's say this is a day that whatever you're doing, you're weak, you're tired, you've been fighting this thing for a year and a half, and you don't think you have the strength. That is not the day to have somebody come and be negative around you. That is not the day for somebody to come bringing clouds in your sunshine. You need to be able to share with them, not today, please, I need help. If you cannot bring light to me today, if you cannot uplift me today, bring strength to me today, please be quiet and go away. And I don't mean any disrespect, I love you. And I'm saying this with love in my heart. I'm seeking to live. And the way in which your being around me is killing me. And if that's your intent, cool. You know, I'll find a way to, to be, to minimize the time that we have impact. And I don't have to say it harsh like I'm saying it, but you have to understand that as the alternative practitioner, I got to be the person to be able to say it harsh to you. I got to be the one to be able to bring the truth to you in a way that you can hear. Understand the way that you've chosen right now is them people are slowly killing you. And yeah, you can hang with them and yeah, it's cool. And yeah, it's fun. But I'm, I'm dying a little bit every day. And I really want to not just survive. I want to thrive. I want to live. I want to see some things. I want to experience what life has put me. And I was not put on this planet to suffer and be in pain. Not every day. So I'm going to make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. So that means what I listen to matters. And so when I have clients that are dealing with anxiety, that are dealing with uh, emotional challenges, mental health challenges, one of the things that we talk about is that negatives, how do I get the negative self-talk out? How do I work with the negative self-talk? And so we start, we talk partially about affirmations. And also what I do with folks is I say, I'm going to talk to you about music. When was the last time you danced? And I don't mean just a little side step, you know, I ain't talking about that. I mean, dance, like, I don't care if you see me, I'm going to record it so you can see me. And I don't give up what you got to say. I need to move my body so that I can live. And I'm not here for your comments. As a matter of fact, I'm shutting the comments off. I'm posting it, I don't care what you say. How about that, how about that, how about that? We're trying to get ourselves better. So one of the first things I'm gonna say, when's the last time you danced? Do you sing? Have you sung? When was the last time your whole body resonated with a healing vibration? Okay, that's the power of sound baths. That's the power of being a choir. And I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the hood because that's I'm from Crenshaw. We're gonna bring it right to Crenshaw. That's why I got a booming sound system in my car because I want to be vibrated with the essence of what I'm hearing. Do you hear me? So when them cats is bumping, they're trying to shake out whatever's inside of them that they don't want there. Don't get mad, don't get angry. 
Again, we're healing ourselves as best we can. Sometimes that's going to be me with, you know, big ass subwoofers in the back seat of my car. And that's what it's going to feel like. All right. And that's a young person. We could talk with them. We could say, hey, come check this yoga class. Come check this sound bath. There's another way. Why don't you come? Let's let's do this. And I'm not talking on anyone's spiritual practice, religious practice, but there is a way we're already doing it. We can help each other. All right. We're going to get lifted one way or another. I do it through breath and expanding and exchange of energy. So some of the other substances that people use, I don't have to. There are negative consequences with ways in which we do that. Too much garlic is not good for you if you understand the plant medicine. Too much creosote, chaparral, not good for you if you understand the plant medicine. Most things, there's a limit. Turmeric, on the other hand, with some black pepper and a little bit of natural oil. Ooh, and I like to throw in some Ceylon cinnamon. Ooh, that's life changing. Baobab powder for African descended folks, life changing. Okay, it's time for us to expand beyond the sad, the standard American diet, the Western European perspective, and I'm, that's wrong, not Western European, Europe ain't real. The Western Asian understanding of food. And now I'm gonna get when I talk, why I'm talking holistic, why I'm talking multi-mode. We talked about you gotta move your body. You want it now we've talked about music and how that impacts the body. And if you wanna hear what I'm saying, if you in a down place, if you in an angry place, put on some earth, wind and fire. See how you feel afterwards. Find the things, the music that works for you, that uplifts you. For me, I mean, beyond Earth, Wind and Fire, there's a song that Prince does, it's called Starfish and Coffee. I don't know if you've seen it or heard about it, but there's a version that he did on Muppets Tonight. And if you're ever around me, you're gonna hear me talk about Muppets and Sesame Street a lot because I talk to everybody. I talk with children, I talk with old people, grown people. We used to be able to share the things that we enjoyed together because we lived in a community. And so when I make a reference to Sesame Street, now you got people talking about, oh, that's for kids. I'm like, well, if it's for kids, why is it grown people on the show? And if it's for only for kids, yes, kids benefit from it, but for us older folks, it's a nice reminder of what it's like to spend time looking at the world through the eyes of a child. When's the last time you did that? Try it tonight when the moon is full, huh? Look up at the sky and don't look up at like, uh, sky, I see it all, I see it every day. Look at it tonight like it's the first time you've seen it. Like it's a lover that you haven't seen for months and you wanna just be outside and be close and you wanna reach up and embrace that's also a form of healing. And if you're out there, see how many of the planets that are up there that you can identify and the stars. And the more you get to know them by name, not just the Westernized names or the Greekified names, our ancestors had names for them too. And those names were connected to our cosmology and connected to our deeper understanding of the cosmos. So, as you look around, everything in your eyesight that is natural is, can, can be your teacher. Spend some time hanging out with young people and children and go put your hands in the dirt. So while we talk about food, where does your food come from? So while you know, we could talk about this, but you need to get your hands in the dirt. There's healing microbes in the dirt that will help you. Wherever you are, there's somebody doing some kind of work around food, food justice, food wellness. Get connected. All right? Whatever space you have, wherever you are, you can grow something for yourself there. Try that. See what it's like for life to go through its successive stages. We talked about it in different pieces on this liberation tools before. 
I'm not going to go into depth on it. Y'all can check it out. Please do. So again, mantra that I talked about is important. You want to be able to recite something. And when I get into a mantra, here's what I use. I, I, I got laid off once and I was working a dead end job. Actually, I'm not, I'm not going to give it a place, but it's a place you can rent from. And they're a blood sucking, rapacious, vampiric capitalist place that preys on the poor by having them rent through over exorbitant prices so they can have the things that they need. And unfortunately, in order for me to, you know, living in this capitalist system, I had to, I ended up working at this place. And every day that I worked there, every day I was late after my first day, I had to beg these people to hire me because they said I was overqualified. And I get in there and I'm working for them, working with them. You know what next? I'm gonna tell you what happened next. So I'm in there and that was when Guapale came out with this, uh, this song called Closer. And I would play that song every day for myself so that I could get better. And as a result, I started making moves to get closer. And there's another song. I'm going to just give you some quick little songs you think about. So Guapale's Closer is one. These are some artists you may have not heard of, but you should definitely know. But one is called Dwight Tribble. And the album is called Cosmic. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's just, that, that's it right there. But the song is called In the Beginning, another great one. There's a young woman, her name is Naila Porter. The song is called Transcending. And these are songs when you talk about a mantra, I played them until I could live out what was happening in that song. It was running in the back of my head. It changed every thought was just about I'm working to get closer to my dreams. I'm working. That's what I'm doing. I'm working to get closer every day, every minute. And so it had transformed the job I hated to the job that paid me to work out. So I went to work knowing I was going to get a workout. It shifted my perspective and aided me in doing the things that I needed. I really want you all to see that we have the tools that we need and we have to just put them to use in ways that benefit us. For me, fortunately, I've been given the tools. And I've been taught how to use them and I want to share these tools with you. So we talked about mantra. We talked about sound, music, sound, vibration. We've talked and there are also healing sounds that we teach through the Tai Chi Chuan and the Qigong that work with the different organs and organ systems to help heal the body. All right, there's a whole science of life that exists. And it's also connected to your food. And just because something's organic is not it. We also wanna be concerned about the soil. The soil is important because that's what we're talking about, something being grown organically. And when I say organic, I don't mean like vegan pork rinds or vegan oxtails. Although, you know, that may be a, a benefit to somebody. You know, when I moved towards an ancestral diet, that wasn't my reason. But I want you to really, really think about what comes in your body and how you digest it. And let's talk about that. How do we intake eyes, nose, mouth, ears, skin? That's why I talked about shea butter the way I did, food grade, organic, traditional processing methods, unadulterated, body butter lady. If y'all are in Los Angeles, they got a shop right here in Inglewood on Market Street. Also, traditional ways of healing, looking at the earth, meaning that how many of you, because we're now into the fall, you eating potatoes, and I don't. And when I say potatoes, I don't. I, I mean blue potatoes, red potatoes. I mean uh, sweet potatoes, and you eat the skin too. Okay, and I want you to remember that when our ancestors first came to this country, they didn't eat the sweet potato. They ate other potatoes. The sweet potato, what they ate was the leaves. 
and they create they ate, ate the leaves the same way you eat greens. Feel me? So a good deal of what we've been taught about how to even eat the things that we eat are colonized. What is your peel good for when you peel your orange? Do you know when they provide the nutritional content, they don't test the peel? That peel is awesome, as well as the pith. The peel has oils in the rind that are of you know, bounteous benefit to the human body. Everything you need in every season for the place where you are, whatever is growing in abundance is for the benefit of the person. So as we head into the fall, we're gonna look at fruits of the fall, brown, orange, dark yellow, greens, dark full. Those are the things that work. The temperature is cooling. And so we wanna generate that fire inside, things that are warming inside. So what does that mean? It means potatoes, that means gourds, that means squashes, it means onions, it means garlic for some folks. What it means is stews and soups, right? Right. Ways for us to be warm. Ways for us to gather together in community. And I know we're in voluntary shelter at home, so this is not exactly the same thing, but we have these media like this. Let's use them for what they're for. Let's gather in ways that are safe for us that we can. Again, just because someone gives you something, let's say like a hammer, it's more than a hammer, okay? And I'll tell you because one of the things that I talk about in terms of self, the home self-defense is nothing beats a good hammer, except maybe a three cell flashlight. But you know, if you got a good ball peen hammer, very good for home safety. You know, because sometimes you need to hammer in them nails that don't sit just right. Okay, so while I'm here, multi modes, you need to be doing more than one thing. That means if you're doing some kind of movement, you're using some kind of music, your food has got to be right. You can't, right now, we're in a place where you can't be slipping in any area. And also, you want to get you some sunlight. Because right now, most folks that are sitting behind a desk, sitting at a table, sitting in chairs that we ain't supposed to be sitting in for long stretches of time, you're not moving as much as you were. You gotta move, you gotta stretch. That's why I was offering these sessions on the Zoom. You can get the link, our, our session, November session starts this Tuesday, 8.30 Pacific time. Check us out. Yeah, you know, if you, if you, ain't, if it, if you ain't feeling it, Holla at me, I can point you in the direction of someone that is doing great work that will benefit you through movement. There's a sister teaching soca, soca, excuse me. There's a sister teaching how to wind, how to move and generate the energy from the spine through the hips to liberate that energy so that we can heal ourselves. How do, this is the thing. And the reason why I say multi-modes is this. For the first time in most people's lives, this voluntary shelter at home has asked you to look at yourself. Multiple days in a row, you've had to look at you in the mirror and hopefully you like what you've seen. I know I have. There's some things that I'm working on, but I know what those are and I don't just not just working on them, I got a plan. Okay, I call it a work plan. So I plan my work and then I work my plan. And I choose joy. That's it, in advance. In advance, I've already decided what's happening for me. And so what that is really gonna mean is what are the ways that you are enforcing the boundaries that maintain your optimal health. Because if it's a boundary, you got to enforce it. You don't hug everybody. And if somebody ain't right, you ain't gonna hug them. And right now we ain't really hugging like that anyway. So you need to really think about 
what places are you finding yourself and are you getting fed and are you feeding? Is there reciprocity there? Is the love there? Because again, even if you're doing all the things that you need to do for you, if you're still putting poison in your ears, in your eyes, in inhaling that poison or eating that poison, it doesn't matter, okay? It's just slowing down the process. Yes, we all have a ticket that we punched when we came here that says that I'm going to die. And excuse me, not I am going to die. This body is going to die. The consciousness that animates this body, that gives fire and life to this body, has opportunity to do different things depending on your spiritual practice or no practice. However, I want you to really think about is, what does happen? Were there folks who knew? Because our ancestors talk about it like they knew what was happening. They did, but I'm not gonna get into that with folks today. If you have a question, drop it in the chat, okay? Multi-modes, again, you want to be able to move your body. You want to be able to have some music. You want to be able to use affirmations. You want to be able to journal, okay? You want to be able to get sunlight. And when I say get sunlight, I don't mean like right now I'm sitting in the light and the light is hitting me, right? What I mean by sunlight is when you incarnated on this planet and whatever way you did it, the people that gave you a body gave you a suit to go with that body. Some of us call it a a birthday suit. And so what you want to do is when it's time to get you some sunlight, put on that suit or as close to that suit as you can and use that suit when you're engaging your sunlight. Because that's the suit that you need most of all when you're in the sun. Because your body is asking for it. And you know, you may be like me and bless some of your neighbors and have some of them come out right when they know you're gonna be in the sun. So they, can, so they can get they can get warm inside, they can get their blood pressure up. Again, we try to bless everybody. We want to share. So I don't mind. Hopefully you don't mind. Ain't no, you know, people do what they gotta do to get through the day. These things will aid you in having some compassion for yourself first and then for others. From there, we're talking about maintaining that consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. The way that we've been living following these Western Asians has been dangerous from every area of people activity, how we paint, what we wear, what we smell, how we eat, how we hug people, how we engage with people, how we develop and cultivate community, how we eat food what food we choose to think of and look at as food, even down to what we call weeds, because we are said to believe that somehow that grass imported from Western Asia is more important than food. And now I'm gonna to get to the last mode that we talk about, which is care for femininity, care for the feminine, care for the environment. The only reason that life exists here is because we have the sweet, fresh water. In every culture around the world, the sweet, fresh waters are connected with femininity, are connected with women, connected with woman, sensual, full of life, empowered woman. So how does this work for us? We frack, which destroys the fresh water. We bring up oil, which destroys the fresh water. We build in unsustainable ways, which destroys the fresh water. We put up dams, which destroys the fresh water. And so I think next time what I'm gonna talk about is what's the traditional way of, of, of dealing with water? Because as you see, water is life. And no matter how we look at it, our life comes from woman. So if you are misusing water, wasting water, that means it really shows how you care about women, the women in your life, the women on this planet, and the things that you're willing to do. So 
I entreat you to expand your relationship with water. Water cleanses, water initiates, water heals. For every single thing that we do, water is necessary. If you want wine, you man, that's water. Beer, water, alcohol. The whole process of alcohol is to distill the water out. <laughs> because you want something in a particular way. And what does alcohol do once it hits the body? It pushes the water out. So now we have, and I'm not gonna get deep on it, into the relationship between alcohol and water because there is a relationship there, but a relationship between oil and water, talking coconut oil, natural oils, not petroleum. But again, what this is getting to is what is your relationship? What is your relationship? with yourself, with your environment, and with the relationship between those two, yourself and the environment. This time we are in now is affording us an opportunity to look deeply at ourselves so that we can know more fully what we have chosen to do by incarnating on this planet right now, to be here with the people that we're with, to build the communities and systems and practices that are needed on the planet. We need you right now to step into the fullness of yourself. So use the tools available to you that you've been taught how to use to help yourself into wholeness where you can make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. And what that means is you're gonna throw off the yoke and shackles of this cis patriarchal settler colonial capitalist system. You're gonna examine your life. You're gonna see who you are and claim sovereignty over this body and then work together for the liberation of others so that they may also do the same. Thank you for joining me here Next week, we're going to continue and expand on this and build on this. That's a poo, which means peace to you. Life, health, and strength to you. Want to also give honor and praise to our ancestors. Want to give thanks to the eternal witnesses of the earth and sky. And you say, Ashe. I say, Amen Re, Sutin Necher, Aten Re, Nemenonk. The hidden reveal rules the revealed, and the revealed rules life. Thank you so much. If you got questions, hit me on the other side on the social media. Please be on the lookout, check out our work. If you find what we're doing is useful and you have time and ability to support us, please do so. That's it, Pooh. All right, y'all, about to lock it down. Thank you all so much for being here with us. That's it, Pooh.